All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Thomas Graf. I work for Noir Networks, which is a Cisco project. With me on stage is Uri Elser from Intel and Russell Bryant from Red Hat. And today we want to talk about, originally we wanted to talk about NSH, but we soon figured out that it makes sense to tackle this from a more generic perspective. So we're talking about SFC, NFV in the OVS orbit, including OVN, OVS, the kernel, because dealing or doing any kind of work in OVS these days requires to work with in, in various projects, including Linux kernel, including OVS, including OVN, OpenStack, and most likely new container networking projects as well. Before we dig into uh, SFC, I want to give a very quick a very quick intro to what is SFC, what is NFV, just in case somebody hasn't heard about it. I'm pretty sure there is tons of people in this room which are much more knowledgeable about uh, SFC than me. But just to give a very quick intro, NFV SFC is basically a way of providing a programmable API to put network functions in between two network endpoints. And when I talk network endpoints, I talk network endpoints from a very generic perspective. Just two endpoints that talk to each other, and somebody wants or desires to put network functionality between these two uh, endpoints. This could be a firewall, this could be van optimization, this could be any kind of network functionality. So this is what, what SFC or NFV is about. And typically we, in particular from the telco perspective, uh, this network, this, that network functionality was, was provided through hardware boxes, and that is now being virtualized. That's what, what NFV is about, and that is, this is where, where, where OVS gets into the picture. So why, why SFC for OVS? As the network functions become virtualized, as they become more scalable, they start to live in VMs very close to OVS. And we essentially want to bring SFC not only to north-south traffic, but to east-west traffic. And as Chris, Weiss, Chris Wright mentioned earlier on, that could actually, traffic could stay on the same box. So we need a way of injecting service functions on a particular compute node between two containers, two VMs, whatever. They will never actually go to the network. So OBS needs to be part of this picture. What is NSH? Um, very quick intro as well. We will dive into the frame format uh, in more details. NSH is a protocol header that allows to define a service graph and transmit service metadata between virtual functions. So I can define, let's say OVS receives NSH support. OVS at this point can tag packets with information which defines exactly to which service function that packet has to go through. And it can define additional metadata um, for, to give to the service functions. And the service function itself can also write metadata into the packet itself. So service functions can, or network functions can, exchange metadata. This is basically NSH. NSH is independent of the underlying transport protocol, so it can work on top of VXLAN GP and it could work on top of Ethernet. Basically anything that has a next header protocol field can be made to work with NSH. Diving into like the more, a more technical aspect, so is NSH just another encapsulation protocol. Is it just uh, like VXLAN, GRE, SDT, whatever? It's not. The difference is the guests, which in this case would be the service functions, need to see the actual header. So it's much more like VLAN. In the case of VXLAN or GRE, we typically do the NCAP decap when we receive the packet from the network and the guests never see um, the actual encapsulation headers. This is how the data path is implemented, or data path has been implemented with this in mind. For NSH, this is different. We typically, let's say we receive a packet from a VM, and we need to send it to a virtual function that is on the same node. We need to add an NSH header to the packet and then distribute it or forward it to, the, to another local guest. So essentially, if we, once we get to the point where we implement the data path, the NSH functionality uh, will be implemented as a, as a what we call in the kernel a new lightweight tunnel implementation, or a new lightweight tunnel type, which is NSH. 
Traditionally, this happened by OVS attaching a set of metadata to the packet and then sending the packet to a NAT device, a network device, a virtual software network device, which then, which then changes and um, manipulates the packet. And then it would be sent out to a physical device. In this case, that is, we need more than that. We need the lightweight channel to feed back the packet to OVS so OVS can give it to a virtual, a virtual guest through a V port. So we need to extend the lightweight channel mechanism to have some kind of loopback mechanism that hands the packet back to OVS so we can do the encapsulation, hand the packet back to OVS so OVS can uh, send it to a service function. So it's much more like a, from an open flow perspective or from a northbound perspective, it's much more like a push pop VLAN uh, action. With that said, I'm handing over to Uri. So uh, the next section here is going to be very brief uh, dance intro into the way uh, things need to work and uh, purposefully uh, organized it such that you see it on the bottom um, kind of functionality that needs to be integrated into the plumbing of what you have in a vSwitch and then on top of that and that is a uh, really just a logical flow of uh, the code. A real code could be organized slightly different, but um, not really. There are few scenarios I'm going to introduce over here. The focus is not to do a real deep dive because uh, it's a short talk. We don't have that much time. The focus here is really to uh, bring to the surface some requirements that we think this technology and um, in some cases is the specific implementation that we have with NSH and open daylight um, and so on. In some other cases, this is gonna be relevant to any other form of SFC that this community may want to um, adopt. Um, so what I'm going to highlight is requirements. And uh, what you see is uh, kind of three key um, path into uh, from the network at the bottom to whatever you have at the top. And obviously you have those VMs that are really innocent, don't know anything about that. Um, they are going to send some uh, traffic into the network and assuming that um, you have on this node all of the pieces that are needed in order to create an SFC, um, that is the path you have on the right. On the left, you have those more privileged cases where you have a service function and then there is a pretty... Um, deep discussion about what needs to happen on the receive, what needs to happen on the, on the transmit, I'll, I'll just describe one. And then you have um, some of the lines here connecting um, the uh, pieces of code to what you need uh, from the control plane um, in order to make all of this happen. So um, when uh, we look at uh, kind of uh, packets that we could encounter in this particular case, uh, you could get simply um, a native uh, packet. Uh, you need to add um, some sort of a local circuit like uh, VXLAN GP in this case, and then uh, comes the NSH header. You could have a packet that already has um, some sort of tunneling on it, and that again is just an example. And um, you may have to append uh, the other uh, additional headers on top of that, and yes, there is the issue of overhead, but remember that as you send it back out, you may need to preserve when the uh, whole processing of the chain is done, you may need to preserve that and send it back to where it goes. Uh, one of the uh, things that we are exploring right now is maybe what I can do is I could tuck some of this into the context header and uh, standardize the way a service function need to interact with it, I could also get another packet which is already been subject to, it's already in the chain, it's already been um, processed and it now has GPE and NSH and um, I need to uh, forward that uh, to the service function. So uh, very quickly, uh, the flow is, um, I'll just talk about the receive flow. On the left side, I need to classify. After I classify, I know, okay, maybe the packet needs a SFC processing or it's already been there. Um, now I could add the NSH encapsulation because that really contains the 
uh, context of what I'm trying to do here from SFC point of view. The SFF is your uh, worker that is going to forward the packet to where it needs to uh, get in the SFC domain. And then I have the concept of the local encapsulation. The reason I need this local encapsulation along with uh, all the other uh, requirements that I have is that I may have multi-tenant uh, situation. I do need to allow the service functions to be uh, processing network packets the way uh, we normally do that with a, with a normal uh, complying uh, stack. So, few points to, to bring to your attention here. Um, the way OVS is working right now, when we have tunneling, uh, you'll get automatically uh, decap at, at the edge. Uh, that is not always what we want to see here, because in some cases, I do want to have that exposed, as uh, Thomas uh, just uh, mentioned. I do need, uh, first of all, the basic stuff of uh, sh we should be able to recognize NSH and and VXLAN GPE. VXLAN GPE is simply that mutation of VXLAN that allows me to have a next header. However, um, because of multiple considerations, we could follow uh, offline if you're interested. It is really working on port 4790 versus 4789. And so what we need of OVS is, is also to be able to uh, provide interoperability, support both of them, and, and also um, translation uh, between them. Um, there is a set of uh, considerations for the case where you have uh, multi-tenancy. Uh, um, there are questions like who actually decides uh, this is a service function? How do I know that it's a multi-tenant? Do I want to expose it to multiple um, kind of isolated tunnels or don't I? All of those are kind of things that we need to talk about. When you look at the transmit, you'll find some other set of issues. Um, well, uh, first of all, the service function it may be all about changing even the internals, let alone the NSH headers. Therefore, it should be trusted. Uh, but if I change the internals, now I may lose some of the forwarding information I had before. Where does it need to go to when the chain is over? So uh, we have this database on, on the side, or call it differently, keep some state, and then you need to uh, consult that. And I'm giving some examples here. Another case that you want to consider is for enforcement. Um, the service function uh, per NSH protocol is supposed to decrement the service index, show that the service has been uh, done. And now, do I check that? Um, I, I do uh, not check that. Um, and um, things like that. So um, another angle, just to expose you, it's a long conversation. Maybe next time we get a little bit more time here on the agenda. Um, there is the issue of how we manage the, um, the tables that consist an open flow based uh, vSwitch. This is an open daylight uh, conversation where we are trying to handle multiple uh, protocols, but it is very much an OVS conversation too, because uh, we need to make sure different communities that manage the vSwitch don't make different decisions or assumptions. At the same time, at the moment, everybody is assuming there is a single SDN controller or single entity that manages everything, which may not be uh, always the case. For your education, if you want, this is the way the different pieces on the previous slide actually map to this slide. Lots of work is going on. I'm running out of time here in open daylight uh, where the code is already mature and running and people are using that. Um, we are actually working on the second uh, release right now. And this is also being used by uh, OPNV, um, which brings the other very important aspect, which is you want to have a complete picture. You want to have orchestration. You want to have NFV as one of the use cases in mind when you think about that we need to make sure that we think about it not just on the v-switch but all the way to the top i got it, Mike. all right so the thomas made a nice point at the beginning of this talk that when you go to implement something like this it's more than just open v-switch it's sort of the, the whole ovs orbit there's several projects we need to talk about i mean so far we've already talked about you know ovs and, and odl um, 
And, uh, but, but there's more, and, and a lot of people talk about using OpenStack for, for NFV deployments, so then we have to ask, well, how, does, how would SFC work in OpenStack? So I wanted to note what existing work there is in OpenStack in this regard. So part of the value of what OpenStack or OpenStack Neutron provides is, is, a, is, a, is a networking abstraction that's independent from whatever backend you're using, whether it was Open Daylight or something else to pro provide SFC. We need an API to find an OpenStack for this. There's a, a basically a subgroup within um, uh, Neutron, um, following the sort of Neutron sub-project naming convention, it's called Networking SFC, is working on defining an API in OpenStack. Uh, I think uh, there's more work to be done there, but uh, this is, this is a, a place I would encourage you to go if you're in interested in, in sort of influencing the direction. But it breaks the, the functionality down to a few, a few pieces. There's the flow classifier. This is basically the definition of the type of traffic that you want to match and then send through a chain. You need a way to define the chain itself. This API defines it as in terms of a, an ordered list of neutron ports that defines the chain. And then, uh, then, it's, and then the metadata. This API calls it the correlation type, but it's defining you know, what is the type of metadata that is exposed to the, the service functions. Because um, uh, you know, th uh, that, that's basically a contract between the, the network and the, the VMs or the service functions is you know, what metadata are we exposing to them. And so they have sort of a place in the API where you can choose that because maybe there's more than one way to do it. Um, another, another aspect of this is, you know, how does, how does OVN fit in? Uh, I think a lot of, we, we've started talking about this. There's, there's been several, there's been a few different mailing list threads about this. We basically started talking about it and there's been some early prototyping. Uh, this is something I, I've started looking at in the last few weeks. I did a little bit of prototyping based on the proposed uh, API in OpenStack, uh, trying to implement enough to support that. And I, I did that at least in, in a limited sense. But I think where we've reached so far is that that uh, the first important question is, do, does SFC make sense within OVN? Is that something OVN should provide natively? Or, and I think right now that the sense seems to be, yes, that, that's something that we think uh, we should implement and, and that we can implement. But we have a lot of questions to answer to come up with a detailed design. Uh, so if we kind of break down the problem a bit, you know, part of it's the metadata, right? So the metadata that goes in and out of the VM, what's the exact formatting of that? There's a lot of existing industry work there that we should uh, you know, take, advantage, take advantage of and make sure we don't re-implement. Um, the, the networking SFC project in OpenStack sort of basically defines its own thing. It says, well, we'll just use an MPLS header, but that's very much based on what does OVS support today? Can we just, uh, and, and you know, that, that's what, I mean, one way to do it. Uh, but what would be better just to, um, uh, you know, adopt something that's more broadly accepted, and that seems to be NSH, so that, uh, that's something we should be um, on the lookout for. So we need a way to have that integrated into OVN. And then there's, there's, to do this right, we need to pass some additional metadata between hosts. Luckily, we already use Genev, so we could, we could do that there. Um, we could also use, if we do NSH support uh, in OVS, we could maybe make uh, VXLAN GPE and NSH sort of another way to do that, right? So maybe that becomes a, another generic uh, encapsulation that we support between hypervisors in OVN. Sort of a, an open question, but it seems, seems, um, seems reasonable right now. Okay, another part of it is the classifier. So how do we define the type of traffic to match? I think this is probably one of the easiest parts in OVN to address. Um, we have a nice way of doing that already. The way, the way that we expose matching traffic for ACLs, there's a couple of examples up here already, uh, and, but, and, and it's defined in, in quite a, um, a nice bit of detail in the OVN documentation. And I think we can just reuse that for, for this. And then, of course, how do we expose this in OVN's northbound database? Uh, we've got some questions there. Part of it, you know, uh, just a quick overview. Maybe we can do it as a, a pretty easy um, modification to our existing ACL support. Maybe this is sort of a new action uh, for our existing ACL table. Maybe we need to get a little bit more complicated. Uh, it's sort of, sort of yet to be defined, but it's not a big deal if we need to add sort of a new table, I, I think. I mean, we can do that. So, you know, we've got these questions that we need to answer, but I think, uh, I think that, that it does seem like there's a price for that in, in OVN. Uh, and if you're interested in that, then I would encourage you to, uh, just for like any other topic for OVS and OVN, get on the OVS development mailing list. And, and join the conversation. I think in coming weeks we'll start um, diving more and more into the, the detailed design for that. So, a few more comments just to wrap it up as we get the uh, red ticket over here. Um, so, there is an interesting dialogue that we are having is here as a community. Um, Chris mentioned that. Um, I think Ben and, and Jesse also centralized versus distributed, physical versus logical. Um, edge versus core, everything is moving in parallel. What I think you want to make sure you, you, you follow here is that 
there is, in specific segments, there is value for uh, the physical awareness. Uh, you need that for technologies like DPDK, you need that also in a telco segment where uh, you really care about all the physical capabilities, ne need to make sure that with orchestration, you actually land your workload in the right place and you close the loop. So as we work as a community to plug those capabilities into vSwitch, and you see um, the list of requirements that we uh, think need to be um, addressed by this community, you may want to think about all the different use cases, all the different segments that need this technology. Maybe we come up with more than one answer. That's the work that we all need to do. Thank you. All right, let's thank our speakers. Uh, we, we have some time for questions, so uh, uh, if you have a question, uh, uh, please come up to the, uh, the, the microphone here. Uh, Still that one. Uh, one question. Uh, are, are you assuming the OVN for SFC? Uh, my question is the, uh, because in the OpenStack environment, the, there is a Linux bullet between the virtual machine and the open switch. So uh, is there any problem to passing the, the, your local header uh, you're proposing? And the, uh, I'd like to hear about your plan. I'm not sure I understood the, heard the question. The question I think was about passing the headers in, in OVN and, and, and uh, OpenStack, if I guess right. Um, what's the plan for passing headers? And I mean, part of this is, uh, you know, it depends on what OVS itself supports. So if we want to do NSH, then OVS needs to support NSH. And then we have work in, in exposing the, the model through OVN. Um, I, I don't, maybe I don't understand the question. I think the opportunity that we have is as, as an OVS orbit to define an abstraction that allows to define a SFC requirements in a generic way. And OVS hides the abstraction or the, the protocol details, whether that's NSH in the background, or whether it's a GNAF powered standardized TLV something. I, this is, I think that's from, my, at least from my perspective, that's the opportunity that we have here that we should take care of or that we should, uh, that we should um, exploit. Uh, we, we have time for one or two more questions, but if our next speaker would like to come up and start setting up, uh, um, Jeff, do, do you want to come and start setting up? So uh, go ahead, please. Yeah. Uh, my question is on uh, the implementation. I, I've seen some code check-ins come in, and uh, in your slides, I see uh, a box which says a plain old switch, and then there is a service forwarding plane. So I want to know what is being checked in. What is the part, uh, the NSH implementation of the OVS that's being checked in? Uh, so, uh, reiterate the question, uh, the slide that uh, kind of playing the old and, and then NSH on top of that. The idea there was to, to show two pieces. Uh, there is a need to add uh, some functionality and that was in the upper box. Uh, there is some, some cases where you really also need to change uh, the fundamental um, of how, how we treat uh, forwarding decisions in, in the V switch as it is uh, as it exists right now. Um, we have a patch that is in progress, actually being uh, discussed on the mailing list right now about uh, push and pop of the VXLAN and of uh, of NSH separately, as you see from this uh, logical model. That is uh, potentially the right way to to handle that. Um, when that is accepted, we hope that the next step is going to be that all of this is integrated in OVS. Code exists today and is working in open daylight, used in, in also in orchestration with OpenStack in OPNV, and we can continue offline as we are running out of time. I'm, I'm sorry to say we're, uh, we're out of time for questions, so let, let's thank our speakers again. Are you kidding me? Uh, wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I have to insist. I have to insist. If, if it's quick, please, please. Well, I don't uh, know if it's quick. Uh, so well, I'm, do, do you think I you know, just, just, I have to make it quick, so okay. I'll try. Okay, Maybe. so I'm Mario Kiyosi. I work for at and and I'm listening to all this stuff. So two questions. I mean, you don't have to answer it here. <laughs> Someone can give it to me offline, but this whole overlay discussion, MPLS, uh, a lot of carriers use MPLS as an overlay. And so this industry, part of this industry started a whole new set of overlays. So that's one question. Did anyone really look at why we needed all these new overlays and why we couldn't use MPLS. Second of all, as a control plane and doing our service training, you have BGP 
turbo planes. So the question is, why are we inventing a new one? Are there, do you have papers or something that describes why, what happened in the layer three world of MPLS and BGP, why those were rejected and you're starting something new? Simple as that. So um, unfortunately, there is not a quick way to answer that. But I'm afraid we have to take it to the hallway and discuss it there. Very good questions, though. All right, let's thank our speakers uh, one more time.